Good evening. Good evening. We're so glad you've joined us to hear from UVA sports photographer, Matt Riley. I'm Beverly Campbell with the university's Office of Engagement. And tonight we're excited to hear what it's like to work as the primary photographer for Virginia Athletics. Before we begin, I'd like to go over just a few technology pieces. We are recording, recording tonight's program so that we can share it with others that may not have been able to join us. And also please keep your microphone on mute throughout the program so that everyone can hear. If you have questions for Matt, as we move through the program, please feel free to drop those into the chat box at the bottom of your screen. And now I'd like to introduce Matt Riley. Matt joined Virginia Athletics in 2006 and is the Assistant Director for Photography and Graphic Design. He has a BA in Journalism and a Master's in Athletic Administration. His work has been featured in several well-known magazines and publications, and he's the recipient of multiple and numerous awards. So at this time, I'd like to ask Matt to join me and welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, this is an honor. I'm, I'm excited. This should be a lot of fun. Good. Well, Matt, for those that may not be familiar um, with you and your work, can you tell us a little bit about your photography background and how you landed in this field and how you ended up at UVA? Well, it's definitely not a typical route to this field. Um, I, I had no intention of ever being a photographer. Um, and I chose, this is the, the funny story, is that I, I technically chose the shortest line at my college orientation. Um, I went to Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. It's where I grew up. And um, I was playing American Legion baseball. And I had a game the afternoon of the orientation. And the line for the School of Education, I wanted to be a gym teacher and coach high school baseball like my dad. And uh, the line was just so long, there was no way I was going to get through it in time to make it to my game. So I asked someone there and they're like, just pick the short line and register and you can always change. Um, so there was nobody in line for the School of Journalism. So I went over and I, I got through and chose the shortest line and I ended up in, in the School of Journalism. And I, you know, I took the first uh, JMC 101 class and really really liked it. And um, I also really liked my advisor, Dan Hollis. Um, he was he was a great guy and just uh, really kind of got me into journalism and I enjoyed the program. And then 9-11 um, happened when I was in um, my news reporting class. And that that really hooked me on journalism because I mean, it was happening as I was in the class. So we were, we kind of took it and started covering the events like we were actual reporters. So that got me started on journalism, started working at the student newspaper, The Parthenon back at Marshall University. And I was the women's sports writer and um, then became sports editor. And then lo and behold, our photographer, um, my good friend, Jeff Gettner got a job at the local newspaper in in Huntington, West Virginia, and we had no one to take our photos for the student paper. So if I wanted pictures for my sports pages, it was on me to do it. So I uh, had to pick up the camera and learn um, how to do it, and I was terrible. Uh, my very first event was uh, the Marshall and WVU basketball game, and I remember not having a clue what to do, and the campus photographer at Marshall kind of saw that, Rick Hay, and he was like, um, Matt, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll teach you a few things. Come by my office. And I, so I started interning for him and, you know, the next thing I know, I'm, I'm doing photos for a bunch of different teams and I become a graduate assistant in sports information at Marshall um, in grad school. And then I got the job here at UVA. It was the very first job I applied for and I got it. So and I wasn't, I, I wasn't really hired to be a photographer. I was hired to be a publications person and do graphic design and media guides and do a little bit of photography to help enhance that. Um, and my boss, Jim Daves, um, really wanted to start doing our photography in-house. Um, and 
he he bought us some cameras and he and I went at it and you know here we are 15 years later and it's it's really become I mean it is my full-time job I'm I'm now the this just happened the other day I'm now the director of photography so um congratulations well thank you yes so I owe a lot to a lot of people uh, to get to where I am and I'm very blessed to be in this position and get to work with uh, incredible teams and incredible people and I just uh, it's just an honor. Well, we are so glad that you hopped into that journalism line um, <laughs> because it's a real treasure to have you here at UVA. So when you were photographing, there's so much more to it than just taking pictures. You really have to be aware of your surroundings. Not only are you trying to not miss an important moment, so you have to capture those, but you have to be aware of so the full environment, the people and the fans and the logistics. When you're behind the camera lens, what are you looking for and how do you keep track of, of capturing all those moments that you need to make sure you don't miss? Well, you kind of have the checklist in your mind of, of what you, I mean, there's obviously the game action that you want to, you have to get, but it's, it's just telling the story. That's what you're trying to do or what I'm trying to do with each event. And I want to, I want to tell the story of our teams and our student athletes and just what happens in that event. So I'm looking for the the emotion and just little little things that help to accentuate um, telling that story. So whether that be a you know a close up shot of Tony Bennett in the huddle, kind of telling a story, or you know in in the pandemic, you're trying to tell you know there's no fans, so trying to capture a unique angle of a venue or something like that, just to to help give people that that can't come the perspective of what's going on. So that's really, that's really neat to me. And I think the journalism background helps me in that because I'm a storyteller. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to do through my photos. You had mentioned to me um, earlier, some examples of, of things that have happened where you really had to think through and make decisions such as at the final four or the championship game, I believe in 2019, and also out in Omaha at baseball. So I guess there are so many logistics and things that you have to be evaluating where you should end up. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about scenarios like that? Well, the one I was telling you, if I had, if I could have a do-over on, on an event or any two events, it would probably be the College World Series uh, championship game and the basketball national championship game, just because, well, now that I've, I've, you know, been able to reflect on things that I would have done differently, but like in, in baseball, um, when it looks like we're going to win the game, you have to decide all right, do I want to be in the third base dugout or do I want to be in the first base dugout? Because which way is the team going to run out and, you know, meet the pitcher at the mound or, you know, what lens do you need to use? There are just so many different variables. And, you know, I, I chose wrong. They came over toward the third base dugout. So I was pretty far away from the event or the, the dog pile and the celebration. And, um, you know, I opted to go. We had a left-handed pitcher on the mound, so I I went to the first base dugout, and I was thinking, you know, I would probably want the shots of the guys running in, you know, in the uniform instead of the guys that were kind of in the jackets and stuff on the bench. Um, so that was a decision I made there. But there were other things, like I told you about the championship game in Omaha, where you know all the cameras before the game were in the photo workroom. It was freezing cold in there. So when you go out and it's 98 degrees and 100% humidity, my camera gear was fogged up for almost two innings. So I'm sitting there constantly trying to wipe the fog off of stuff and just things like that. And then uh, the other story that, you know, I, I would like a do over on was in that in the basketball championship game. Um, when it looks like we're going to win, one of the ushers comes over to me because I'm wearing the white vest and, and Ryan Mahanes, who's our video guy, is beside me. And he's also got the white vest and he gives us the option. He said, since we're the team photographers, we can move over here on the other side of the basket with the cheerleaders and we can go run out as soon as the buzzer sounds with the team. 
or we can stay put where we are and there's a 30 second media hold where everybody, you have to stay seated because TV has the rights to film everything before the photographers kind of get out in the melee. So Mahanes and I decided to go on the other side of the basket. Well, as it goes, Kyle Guy comes running straight at the photographers where we would have been sitting and, you know, does the iconic jump and um, missed that photo. But I mean, I think, I think I got plenty of other good shots, but that was kind of the iconic one that I really wish that I would have been able to capture during that moment. Good, thanks. So you have been here a long time, since 2006. You Making me feel old. No, I've been here longer than you. So <laughs> we're here together. We've seen a lot. So out of all of this time, do you have a shoot that really stands out in your mind as a favorite? And I know that you have taken a lot of pictures, but anything that just stands out to you that you just really remember and think fondly of? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in 15 years, there's been a lot. Um, I've covered and I've, I've photographed 10 national championship games or, or events that we've won, which has been, I mean, each one of those has its own special place. But as far as like an actual photo shoot where I've done a setup and everything, there's one and one photo that just, it's, uh, it was with Morgan Bryan, you know, two-time national player of the year, World Cup champion, and one of my favorite people of all time. And we did a, I had this crazy idea. We were doing kind of a thing, making a splash with, I believe was what I was trying to call it. And um, so we had her at the pool and we had a black backdrop set up um, kind of in the water, kind of up in, in, and elevated. And then she's jumping into the pool. But as she's jumping into the pool, we have somebody throwing the soccer ball in to try and make it look like she's, you know, kicking it as she's in midair and then somebody's throwing a bucket of water in and somebody's shooting a hose with a spray of water and then I'm down in the pool and we've got you know two lights on both sides of the pool illuminating it and I probably made her jump into the water at least 60 times to try to get the the shot and there was one there was one that just it clicked and everything worked it all came together in the right spot and that was definitely Definitely my favorite photo that I've taken um, since I've been here. 60 some tries, that's dedication. Yeah, she, uh, she was a trooper on that one for sure. And it wasn't, it was, it, it had to have been awkward for her because there was actually, the swimming team was actually practicing in the main pool. So they're probably like, why are these lights flashing? And why is Morgan Bryan jumping into the pool? Like, I mean, she had cleats on and everything. She was in full full uniform. So I remember the swimming coach, Mark Bernardino comes over at the time and he was like, Steve Swanson's going to kill you. You realize that you're making his star player, national player of the year, jump into the pool wearing cleats. That's, that's not good. You know, he's joking, but. So, um, so you've gone to some pretty great lengths to get the best picture that you can. I'm sure you've gone a little too close to the edge on, on some things. You've been a little too high up. You probably dangled from some things. What are some of the interesting things you've done just to get that right shot, that perfect shot? Well, the first one that comes to mind was definitely going underwater for the first time to photograph. Um, you know, we, um, swim team wanted their media guide cover to be an underwater photo. So we rented a housing and I have never, I've never done scuba or anything, and I'm sure um, <laughs> I'm sure it would be frowned upon. But Mark Bernardino, they had a they had a scuba tank that they used to clean the pool, and he was like, "I'll teach you." So I got a crash course in scuba, and um, so he just basically threw me to the bottom of the pool and told me to focus on my breathing for like 30 minutes and. Next thing I know, I've got athletes coming into the water and we're trying to figure out how to keep them staying on the bottom of the pool. So that was pretty neat. Um, and then uh, for sure, another one that comes to mind was climbing humpback rock with the wrestling team and, you know, had about 50 pounds of lighting equipment and cameras to, to do a shot for their poster. Um, so that was very cool. And then 
I don't know. I've done a lot of other things. I, I hang out in the catwalks a lot for basketball games. You've probably seen some of those photos and um, played with fire a little bit. And uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, shots was we did a thing with the women's basketball team at the Charlottesville Fire Department burn building, which my wife just texted me about the burn building. Um, so Chief Jones from the, the Charlottesville Fire Department was great in helping us get um, get in get in there so we could take the um we used to have the fire the flaming fire cannons for the basketball warm-ups I don't know if anybody remembers those but we actually took those over there and we had them you know going up into the it was a really cool looking looking shoot but the one the funny story about that is I was going to meet him to kind of scout the the burn building and I get there before he does. So I'm kind of like looking around and I open the door and I see a like legs, like looks like a body and it's like their training dummy and it's behind a wall. So all you see were the legs. So I jumped out of there. I thought there's a dead body in there. So Chief Jones comes down and I'm like, I think somebody's dead in there. Oh, he's like, so you met whatever the guy's name was. And it's like, you know, they're training dummy, but boy, it really made me feel like a dummy, but. Um, <laughs> do you ever have to do anything else with, with water, like for the rowing team? Um, yes. how, how do you get the good shots? Do you get them from shore? Um, a little of both. Um, rowing is definitely one of my favorite sports to shoot. Um, love the team, love Coach Sauer. He's been awesome to me and my family um, since we've been here and I, we actually went to this is this is a good story we went to some great links with the rowing team we actually took one of their boats into the pool to try to do a photo um with uh for their poster or their media guy cover or something so we were at the north grounds and kevin brought a boat over and we somehow got it through the doors and into the pool it was it was quite a spectacle, but it was pretty cool. But um, yeah, I've done, I've been to a lot of the NCAA rowing championships. And um, one of the, one, one of the moments that always stands out to me, it was, they're winning the championship, I believe it was 2012 and we're up in um, New Jersey. And I remember, you know, Kevin comes running down toward the finish line and, you know, this, the, the sheer emotion and the tears and the, you know, when the team wins, and it's, there's a great photo of them, like, you know, celebrating, looking over toward Kevin and he's right behind me. And, um, but then the boat starts going back toward the shore and, you know, all of the fans are over there and the fans start going out in the water and the boat's coming closer. And I'm just like, huh, I should probably be over there. So you know, lo and behold, Craig Littlepage is out waiting in the water in his khaki pants. I guess I can go out too. So I remember, you know, running over there and I, I'm almost into the water and I remember, you know, my phone and my wallet are in my pants. So I look back to our SID, Tom Finstermaker, and I throw them back to him. Like he catches my phone for me. And so I went out in the water and for that celebration. So that was pretty cool. Um, that was one of the cool moments, uh, just being out there and as just seeing the sheer joy and emotion of everybody, like hugging and falling out of boats. And it's a good time. Someone asked a, a great question since you're going to some pretty great lengths to get photos often. And you are right there with the players for the majority of these. Someone asked, have you ever been knocked into, you know, especially maybe on the football field? Yeah, there's been a couple injuries. Um, the best or the worst was probably we had just won, uh, I think, UConn missed a field goal or something when Chris Long was here. So this was back in, I guess, 07. I, I was uh, was pretty young back then. So the team's running over to high five all the fans or the students. And I'm kind of following behind Chris Long, you know, taking his photos as he's high five. And well, he abruptly turns to like run back toward the, the locker room. And uh, he like just knocked me flying. You know, Chris is a big dude. So I went flying and I landed on one of the cameras and oh, I definitely cracked a rib or two in that one. But uh, that was that was definitely one of the more painful ones. But um, I remember Sean Singletary, 
uh, knocked into me one time and uh, I was actually sitting in one of the little chairs on the sideline and, and I went flying back. So my legs are up in the air and I can't really get back up because I'm in the chair and Sean actually pulled my leg to, to get me back over. So that was a pretty good one. But yeah, I definitely have the best seat in the house. And I remember I told you this story that was, you know, a couple of years ago when LeBron came to JPJ and he was back in the second row. And then, you know, I, Michael Jordan was a few rows up at North Carolina the next game. And I remember tweeting or putting on my Instagram. It's pretty, pretty hard to believe that I had a better seat the, than LeBron James and Michael Jordan at our last two basketball games. So definitely pretty cool to to be where I am and fortunate to do what I do. So, so Matt, your work, clearly you experienced some really, really exciting moments in Virginia athletics, but you're also getting to capture some very emotional moments too. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that's like, the good and the maybe disappointing? I mean, for sure. I mean, the one that probably every Virginia fan knows is probably that uh, the UNBC game, obviously. And how do you, how do you cover that as uh, you know, you're the one seed and you're the first one ever to get beat by a 16. I mean, what do you, how do you do that without, you know, compromising what, what we try to do? We try to tell the positive stories, you know, and that's so, I just remember just being, just seeing Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy up on that podium with Coach Bennett afterwards and just, wow, just gut-wrenching. But, you know, sometimes there's, there have been times and actually Carla Williams asked me often after we lose a, in a championship or a big game, did you get any kind of the agony of defeat type shots? So there was one this year after we lost down at Virginia Tech and Charles Snowden is over on his scooter and he's just head down. And, you know, some of those are just, but I think a lot of the teams like to see that. And like Kyle Guy, you know, he used the, he put that photo up on his bulletin board in his wall after, after the UMBC game and used it. So we don't typically post them on our channels or, you know, to, we don't want to put it, show our players in that, you know, in those vulnerable moments, but you still like to capture them just to help to tell the story. Someone asked a question about all of these UVA photos, sports photos, are they, how are they being archived? And I know that's quite a chore, I'm sure. And does something like that exist at UVA and how far does it go back? The digital world, of course, makes things much easier. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a chore. Um, and I wish I had a little help uh, without without interns this year with the in the pandemic. We haven't we haven't had interns in our office, so I, I rely heavily on them to help archive. So I've a lot of or most of it has fallen on me this year. So we have a we have a system, um, and my my boss Jim Dave's actually started it when he got here. Um, he got here right before I did. So our our server kind of goes back to 2006 uh, is when we really started doing that. But we've, over the years in our archive room, we've had hard copies of photos. So there's stuff that, there's a system where we can go and, you know, look in the book and find a player folder and there will be images in there. And we've tried to digitize some of those over the years. Um, and we have a pretty expansive archive that we can digitally get to. Um, and we've actually, this year we've actually upgraded a little bit and it's more it's definitely more user friendly we can access it on mobile devices now so it helps a lot for when our sports information directors are on the road and they can access stuff easily on the laptop or computer so i don't even want to venture a guess as to how many photos we have in our archive i'm sure it's i mean and i, I don't know i know I was telling you, I think I've taken probably, I, I don't know how many millions, but in 28, the 2018-19 year, I took 325,000 photos. So if you add, add that up over a 15 year uh, span, that's pretty crazy. 
Well, I gave you quite a project leading up to this event, and that was to think about coming up with a collection of photos that you could share with us tonight. Um, I failed miserably in your favorites. narrowing it down um, to 30. Yeah. Right. So narrowing over a million down to 30. Thank you for doing that for us. So well, I, I did not. I didn't get it down to 30. So I. <laughs> Well, we can't stay here all night, uh, but we'd love to see maybe what you came up with um, and walk us through some of those um, and just share some of these great photos that you've taken. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll roll as fast as I can and tell some stories along the way if, uh, if you'll let me and hopefully have some time for some questions at the end. I can't, I can't stay on too long because I'm in my son's room, so he's got to go to bed. He still has school tomorrow. So, um, hey, Carter, I see you in there. So. All right, I'm going to share my screen here and we'll we'll get started. All right, well this is a this was the very first portrait shoot that I that I did. This is with Samdev Devarman after he won his first NCA title. Um, so this is back in 06 and this was for the cover of um, the VAF annual report. So this one always will have a uh, a special place for me just because I I did a lot of photos with Samdev over the over his time here. And we did a great um, little Zoom interview that I, one of the things I did during the pandemic, I caught up with him and he was at, he's actually back in India. So we had had to get our time zones figured out, but we had a great, about an hour long conversation of, of things. And um, it was good catching up with Samdev, but this one always kind of will hold a special place for me. This is my sports in a pandemic slideshow. Welcome. All right. So I, this is, uh, it's, it's been kind of interesting just to see different images um, and just to tell the stories. And this one, I'm assuming this is the referee. Is the referee up for everyone? It is. Okay, great. All right, this one to me just screams sports in a pandemic. Um, you know, he's got, the, he's got the mask on, he's got the gloves, got his hand sanitizer. That's been that was one of my favorite photos of, of 2020. This one too to see him, the guys on the bench, just um, it's just a different dynamic for sure. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just uh, when you're when you're at the at the games and just when you can hear the team chanting defense, defense, you know, it's just a completely different than having our crowd go wild. But um, just to try and tell those stories is what what I've tried to do with these different images. And 2020, like it or not, this has been a part of it, the social injustice. And um, these have been some of my favorite photos because they show the unity of the team. Um, and, you know, like trying to tell their stories. And I just thought this was just kind of crazy just to see the, the jump ball and just the empty stands and you got the cutouts and I just thought that was a unique photo um, and just seeing this the emptiness of JPJ is just kind of kind of hits hits hard same thing with Scott Stadium just you know you got a few fans over there but just the the starkness of those empty bleachers um, just a you know, that first game, it was just a surreal feeling, um, you know, and you can kind of hear the cars driving by. It's just weird, you know, because it's, you, you never hear that before, but just, uh, you know, and you can hear like the, the quarterback and just, it's just, there's just a quietness to it. That's just a strange, strange thing, but got used to it over time and there were a few things that I definitely did like about it you know I had a nice parking spot right in the garage I could walk right out so that was that was one plus of of photography in a pandemic and this was another this is another plus um never had this photo before this is our senior day for for football and their you know their families couldn't be out there and you know there's no nobody around but this is the first time we've ever had the full group group shot on senior day so that was kind of a cool thing and and the guys all like that and it was it was nice to nice to get that for them and again just 
just seeing that emptiness as they walk off the field. Usually, you know, after a win, you would have you know, a bunch of students over there and they would go celebrate with the students, but not so much this year. And the, some of my favorite imagery, I always, always find Carla. Um, Carla is awesome. And she always gives me a wave and I think she always, always appreciates me. And we always talk about how we wish we could, could clone uh, one another because we always end up walking in and out of events and especially this spring we've been uh, doing a lot of running between the boar's head and you know mim gym or boar's head and the softball field or you know Klockner and Davenport and so I've appreciated her and just uh, her support through this and then this is one of my favorite photos of, of the pandemic is usually the hillside would be packed. You'd have a bunch of photographers around the coin toss, but just being able to, you know, just having the coin hanging in midair, it's kind of like a snapshot in time of what football and sports were like in the pandemic. And then everybody's seen the cutouts. Um, my son Carter's over here. I'm gonna see him off to the side over there holding the NCAA trophy. He's got that in his room now. So he's pretty proud of that photo. Dad did a good job of getting the white because it really stood out on TV. You could always find Carter. So, and then again, this is from one of the, the ACC unity moment that we do um, before every game now. So this is a pretty striking shot with them all in their masks. and. Volleyball is one of the few sports that actually they've been playing with their mask on. And um, that's been kind of crazy just to see that happening. And then here's a happier time photo. The volleyball team always, always yells Matt Riley and, you know, they pose. This was a trick or treat or Halloween. So that's why they've got the crazy looking mask on too. But, and then this is a shot from a rowing practice and they had to row with their mask on. And that was just, knowing how grueling those practices are and, and, you know, being out on a boat with coach Sauer and just seeing them. I mean, I sometimes struggle running upstairs or something with a mask on. I can't imagine what rowing would be like with a mask on, but they did it. And all of our teams have, have done a really good job with it. And again, running out empty stadium. So, and then there's Carla. So that's kind of my pandemic, uh, kind of capturing some moments in the pandemic. So uh, how about we go to March Madness? How about that? So I've, uh, I've, I, I started with this photo um, here with, this is, this is from the UMBC game and this is March Madness. And this was probably most UVA fans worst nightmare, but then it led to this. So I can't, can't complain. So here's the, some of the stuff that I thought was really kind of my favorite part about the journey of, of that championship run was capturing all the behind the scenes stuff. So just, I mean, the craziness of how big the, you know, the U.S. Bank Stadium or whatever it's called in Minneapolis was, and, you know, the players had to take golf carts around everywhere um, just to get to point A and point B it was kind of, kind of unique. And here, here's a shot. This is after I had just made it back to the locker room and, you know, I was trying to get in there and get some of the guys reaction. And this is Jack Salt, I believe, FaceTiming with his mom after he gets back in the locker room, which is really cool to me. And Jack, Jack holds a special place in our family's heart because he's Carter's favorite, favorite player. And he's always been awesome to us. And so that one, that one was a cool photo for me. Just capturing some details. These are Kihei Clark's Crocs, so kind of a little, little, little part of the story along the way. I like to capture different things, so try to break up the monotony of just some of the stuff that you shoot all the time. So you look for little details, and Kihei's <laughs> rainbow Crocs were definitely one of the ones that stood out. And now this is this is part of the the first media day that we had uh, in Minneapolis, and. They had guys doing different stuff and see, uh, seeing Kihei and Tai and all those guys try to play the instruments was pretty funny. 
here's a shot of guys just waiting around. I mean, I don't think people realize how long the teams kind of have to just wait to do different interviews and different types of things. So this is, I'm just chilling in the hallway and it's kind of crazy to see this stuff now. Um, <laughs> seeing all the people together is kind of weird with not wearing masks anymore. Um, this might be, this is probably a top 10 photo for me of the whole journey. This is Jaden Nixon. This is probably, this is probably 7 a.m. He's out in the hallway preparing for an exam because he didn't want to wake his roommate up. So I talk about servanthood and, and being a good teammate. You know, he's out there early in the morning trying to get his studies in before teams go to practice and stuff. And I remember Carla, I showed that to Carla Williams and she was like, oh, send me that. And then we were at a practice and she had me take a photo of him out there. And, you know, he's, he's one of the scout team. He's playing the point guard of, uh, you know, the Texas Tech you know, opponent or something. So she was like, she was very impressed at that. But just one of the things I like to do is, is try to, you know, capture what it is to be a student athlete and that's that's part of it it's part of the thing you've got to get your studies in while you're anytime you can when you're on the road and this is part of the part of the stuff at, in Minneapolis was it was always cool anytime you'd leave the hotel there'd be people and just seeing seeing the people interact with our athletes and the people in the lobby it was just it was so cool um hopefully we can we can get there again and, and get to experience it this is a personal favorite for me this is about 2 a.m this is after we had finally got back to the hotel and finally heading up to the room carter gets a shot with ty jerome um so that one will hold a special place for me and and, and carter of course this is a, a behind the scenes video shoot that went on that they did some of the promo videos of and uh, this was interesting because obviously when they're rolling they didn't want you taking photos but luckily I had a Sony A9 which is mirrorless camera that's completely silent so I could shoot the whole time and um, wouldn't hear the click so it's good that we invested in that because we definitely needed it for a lot that was going on uh, behind the scenes on that day. Another thing, as a, as a photographer, you're always, you know, looking for different things and you've always got to, you know, be on the lookout for when your alums are around and, you know, you got Carla and I believe that's Tiki um, or Rhonda, I don't know which one, it's hard to tell them apart uh, since they're twins, but um, yeah, it was just a nonstop, constantly looking for different things to take photos of. And then this is just the fun, the, the players had like a little lounge area. This is them getting to relax a little bit. And what in the downtime that they did have, um, you know, try to make the most of the experience. This is just, uh, this is me trying to capture practice and just a different angle of it instead of just, uh, you know, guys shooting, just wanted to kind of show off the vastness of, of the arena. Uh, this is behind the scenes, Kyle Guy getting the haircut um, in the lounge. It was offered up to the, to, to the guys, and it's amazing. This is a photo that we, we wanted because we were trying to you know, think if we do win, we're going to have a, you know, put together a book. So we want to get different behind the scenes type stuff. So trying to figure out when the barber was coming and, you know, I'm trying to always, always keep your schedule of what, what's happening is it, tough in that scenario. And then now uh, you got, you know, coach talking to the uh, media talent there with, you know, you got Grant Hill and it's kind of, it's always kind of cool to listen in to, to what they're talking about in these, these scenarios. And always the media scrum, different things you got to look out for. Good friend Damon Dillman there. Um, and then travel photos are definitely some of my favorite uh, favorite thing to capture. So always get different moments of guys and uh, not just with, with basketball, but love to capture the, 
the camaraderie of the players and the friendships and just the unique bonds. Um, you know, it's not just basketball, but football. They kind of look for me when they're on the tarmac and they come out and they pose and they're different groups and they all have their little clicks that they kind of go with and try to get the photos of them. So, and just some more travel stuff here. And then again, balancing the, the academic life and stuff on the road. And some of my favorite shots, just kind of study hall. And then you also see the work that goes on behind the scenes. This is Matt Altoff, our equipment manager, and um, putting, the, putting the patches on the jerseys. It's not, not as glamorous as you think, you know, it just happens in the hotel room. So it's not like a big production. It's just... Matt always tells me, uh, hey, I'm gonna, gonna put the logo on, come on down. So always like working with Matt, so. And then this is one, uh, you know, he liked to capture the little details. And this is, this is actually, looks like, you know, Jack say a good job, but he's actually giving a thumbs up to, I believe there's some Auburn fans that are taunting us as we got back to the hotel after we beat them in the final four, so. <laughs> always keep the camera rolling and then I'll end on that one for for my behind the scenes look at the final four uh, with with my son Carter greeting Mommy as they get back to the hotel definitely definitely one of the highlights of my career was was having Carter be able to to be a part of the journey so and there's Frankie playing the piano for the team so Anybody have any questions on, on the final four um, behind the scenes look? Those are all great. I mean, photos that I've never seen before. So thank you for sharing that, what, what it's like behind the scenes. Yeah. Hey, Matt, Steve Zeisselman. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for shooting the picture of my daughter's cutout. Oh. Um, uh, but my question is, um, I'm an amateur and I shoot my sons. I think I shot about 15 years of Little League. He's doing high school crew. You do a ton of events. Do you have a sport you enjoy shooting either for the challenge or just because of the kids? Um, yeah, I mean, each one has their own, but I, I have a couple favorites for sure. Um, I would say I, I, basketball would be probably one for me just because of the being a JPJ and just the environment is definitely awesome. But um, I would say other than that, my tennis and rowing are probably my other two favorites. Um, and rowing's just cool. Um, and it's unique. You get to be out on the, I love being out on the water. It's really, really cool. Um, you can get some really dynamic images. I love the team. Um, always felt really welcome when I'm around them. So that always makes it makes it cool in tennis um I kind of that's how I got my start shooting tennis and it's one of the one of the easier sports to um because you you know where the ball's going so you can kind of make some art with that and it's usually some some dramatic lighting either one way or the other so there's different ways you can play and I've I've always loved going to the NCAA tennis tournament and being a part of those four men's championships and and, and the women's team success as well. Um, always smaller teams as well. So tennis, you can kind of form some relationships with the with the players since you're you know smaller groups and uh, being along for the journey. That's always been cool. But you know, as far as challenging goes, um, swimming's a challenge just because indoors and you know you got splashing water everywhere. And I, I love the dynamic images that swimming can provide, but. I would say the hardest to shoot for me would be squash without a doubt, just because trying to shoot through glass and it's just, there's not really any great angles um, in that facility other than on the main courts to shoot from. And, um, and diving, diving's tough just because they're spinning in every which way and, and the lighting's not, not great in there. So those are probably the two most challenging for me. Thanks, appreciate your work. And as I said, I've been shooting my son He's going off to college next year, so I guess I'll have to either find a, a an, another kid to stalk and take pictures of or figure out a different way to, to point my camera. But I love your work. Thanks again. I appreciate that. Thank you. 
All right. Hey, I had a quick question before you go ahead and continue on. I was wondering if there's a way that students um, at the university could participate in sports photography. Um, yeah, we definitely, um, you know, you can reach out to me. We, we definitely have some intern spots. Um, we've, we typically have three or four interns each year. And this year has been different because we haven't been allowed to, to have interns um, just on the, on the sidelines. So I haven't had an intern this year, but I fully anticipate once we get back to normal, we'll um, resume resume that and I'll be looking for candidates. So certainly reach out to me, um, reach out to, you know, I think the people in the photo club have reached out before as well. So um, yeah, we'll definitely, there are definitely opportunities. I'm gonna roll back into this. Does everyone see Chris Taylor with a big tire? Yes, we do. Okay, yes, well. Come in, so I might then, ask you a couple as we go through these. Yeah, sure, uh, you can fire away. This is, this is, um, this is the last championship here uh, for tennis. This was, I believe, 2017, I think, down in Athens. This was, this is one of those where I picked the spot right, um, where to be. Um, I kind of, where the, where the championship was, I would typically usually be in between the courts. And I decided to go, because I saw where the team was kind of congregating. So I snuck in behind the curtain and over, to get to this side, knowing that if they if he won on that game, then the team would come running out, and it actually it worked out for for the best. So that's one of my favorite images there um, of them winning winning. That's probably my favorite one of the four championships that they won. And then here's the here's one of the shots from the rowing team out in out in the water um, in New Jersey. That's after going out there. So that one uh, that one was special for sure. Uh, here's here's a fun one I did with Joe Harris and Morgan Bryan when they were athletes of the year. Uh, we we actually had them come through and they put on different uniforms and of of all the different teams. But uh, we actually had a lot of fun with this one. So here's here's the here's the rowing uh, the boat in the pool. Uh, still can't believe we we did that. That was. It was cool and a challenge. It was definitely a very challenging just to light it and to logistically, you know, because they get pretty far away the further down you get the boat. So um, a very tough shoot, but very cool nonetheless. This is from, um, you know, after, after the events on August 11th, a few years ago, we did a Who's Together campaign and I shot everything in black and white and, and we had, um, messages of unity um, from our student athletes. And this is one of the most striking portraits um, that I had. This is Aaliyah Hulandel who, you know, people ask me about, about favorites and it's hard to, it's hard to pick favorites, but you know, some, some definitely stand out, you know, Aaliyah for sure. Morgan Bryan, like I mentioned, um, and Malcolm Brogdon, there's, there's just, the list goes on and on, but Aaliyah was always one that would, anytime I, I wanted to try an idea or, or you know, needed a model for something. Aaliyah was always great to step up. And this this campaign, um, the Who's Together, was one of the the more the most meaningful that I've done uh, in my time here. So it was it was a really really cool to get the athlete perspective and to kind of take the reins of that um, on our social media it was was a, a good project for me. Here's another one from that. This is from the men's soccer team. So just to promote the unity and uh, they were the, the soccer team, they refer to themselves as the United Nations of soccer because they have so many different um, countries represented. This is one of my favorite shots of, this is after um, the Virginia Tech win. And just that sheer look of relief and just joy one of my favorite photos of all time. Um, just knowing all the, I mean, you, everybody on this call is a UVA fan. So, you know, the, the emotion that goes into this and just how long it had been since we'd finally beaten them and with Snowden holding him up and just, just a powerful, powerful day. And some, some tears of joy that day for sure. 
Uh, there's lacrosse winning the championship back in, was it 2019, I guess, 2018? I, my years are running together now with pandemics. I'm starting to forget here. Um, but yeah, I think one of the, the crazy story here, um, you know, the day of the final four game for, for lacrosse is when U-Haul was imploding. So, you know, they hit the plunger, U-Haul comes down. I'm in a plane 15 minutes later with Carla Williams and our, our other executive teams. And we're headed up to Philadelphia and we made it, you know, made it up there in 45 minutes and only missed about 10 minutes of the game. So it's kind of crazy that, that turnaround, um, just to think that, you know, an hour, hour and a half before we're watching you haul come down and then we're in Philadelphia watching lacrosse play in the final four. It's pretty crazy. This is one of my favorite images um, from the final four when we came home and the celebration at JPJ, just that's Frankie Badoki holding the trophy up. Um, and just with the, the, you know, the JPJ imagery, the, that trophy, uh, the trophy came home. So just that one, that one sticks with me as well. Uh, here's the, here's a shot of the unity moment with the team locked arms. Um, I think we've, we've kind of touched on that. This, this here's, here's my favorite shot before you all came down. I wasn't in the greatest, uh, you know, this is where we were up at Clockner where the staging was for kind of the speeches and everything. So wasn't the most dynamic images of it actually coming down, but I thought this one was pretty striking with the, the plunger and, and the building about to meet its doom. And then there's the shot, you know, after Tony miraculously slapped that Virginia logo on that thing without even looking. That's why he's the best. This is one of my shoots with baseball. I always like this one, just uh, just kind of came together out of nowhere. This wasn't the plan at all. The plan was to go out on the field and these guys were all just kind of sitting in the dugout um, waiting on me to get the light set up. And I had one light still over here. And I was like, just kind of, so they, I had Chris Taylor pop the bucket over there and then they just posed and it turned out, I think we used that on the cover of the media guy that year. Here's another tennis joy. This was down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, after they'd won. Great dog pile photo. That's probably my favorite. My favorite thing is just to capture the joy and the emotion after, after a win or a big play. That's that's where my that's my bread and butter. That's what I I like to do the most for sure. Um, when it comes to event coverage, my other thing is just definitely. Uh, you know, getting to know the student athletes. That's, that's it. Um, you know, the classic streamer shot at JPJ. Can't wait till we can do that again. This one, this was the, after we won that championship, the, the regular season. Um, gosh, this was probably what, 14, 2014, 2015. Just look how young Anthony Gill and Devin Hall look and, one of my favorite things about this photo, if you look in the net, you can see Justin Anderson's head back there inside the net, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, but this photo has been hanging in my office for ever since it happened. It's always been one of my favorites, just that grin on Tony's face. This is, um, Matt, we have just a, a minute or two left. Oh. Um, we want to be respectful of your time. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, Two I could questions. go on all night, geez. <laughs> I know you could, and we could probably sit here for hours. Um, two questions came in. Yeah, sure. um, someone asked, you know, it, you're there to do a job, which is to photograph, but it's also hard to not be a fan. How, how do you juggle that? I mean, do you find yourself cheering with your camera? I'm sure you jump up and down a bit. It's It, it would be impossible to control at all, but how do you kind of juggle that being a fan? But it's your job and you have to be very serious and, and focused it's, as well. It's tough. Um, I remember the first time back when we were in the NCAA tournament in 07, I guess, or yeah, when Sean Singletary and J.R. Reynolds were, and we were, we were losing to, I, I don't even know who we were playing, but 
but Sean Singletary had a shot to either tie the game or win the game. And I was just watching. So I didn't even, so I remember I was thinking to myself, man, if he makes that shot, I have no, cause I was being more of a fan. And so I think that was kind of a wake up call to me that, you know, I have a job to do more than, you know, I was, I was, you know, at that time I'm 23, 24, you know, I'm not. <laughs> um, so I think that was, and I remember, and I get more nervous now than anything. Gosh, I remember at the final four and even the elite eight, like I'm kind of rocking back and forth over there. And Ryan Mahane's like hits me on the shoulder. He's like, dude, you're rocking. You need to, you need to settle down. So, yeah, I mean, it's like you said, I have a job to do, but always, always, always hoping for a win. And, um, you know, you can celebrate later. That's kind of, the way I look at it now. What else you got for me? We are about out of time. Are, is there a last photo that you want to show uh, us? I, I would say that this this one's one of my favorites of all time. Just the 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 capture of the Tony put the fist pump, the joy of all those guys, uh, all those guys together. You know, um, that's that's one of my favorites. This one's hanging in my office too. Um, you know, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, mention my family and all of this. Um, you know, they've been, they've been, they've suffered through a lot of long hours and, and me being gone. And, you know, they've, you know, I, I, it's, it's very cool that my sons are going to be able to, you know, witness some of the stuff as, as they get older and be a part of it. But I do have to shout out to my wife and my, my family for, I, that was one of my, I, I don't, I didn't get to that photo of, uh, of Brian O'Connor, but there was one of him that was just, um, you know, my, it, it's his family after the college world series and coming, coming together and just seeing the look and the, the tears on their face. That's one that, um, you know, it just, it hit home because that one is just what they, what it's all about, really. It's about, you know, you come home to your family and I, you know, I, I just, you know, at the end of the day, you know, seeing that joy on their face and, you know, I, I know, I know I'm never going to win a championship, but I just hope I can make them proud. Um, that's, you know, and, and get to see them. <laughs> so. well, well, Matt, thank you so, so much for your time tonight. Um, hey, we'll come back for part two and we'll finish, finish up. I, Absolutely. I know that I enjoy looking at your photos on the Virginia Cavaliers Facebook page to keep up with, with your different pictures because you're covering all of the sports. So I'm glad that some of them are landing there anyway, but thank you. Yeah. I mean, you are capturing amazing moments for these student athletes that they'll have forever and their families. So thank you for that. And yes, thank you to your family as well for letting you travel so much. Um, and, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a big shout out to our student athletes um, for their dedication and their determination, especially over the last year. So again, thank you for your time. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Lots of alumni, parents, and friends. We have some of our UVA club volunteer leaders on here as well. So thank you. Have a great rest of your evening and go Hoos. Thank you.